so in canal guys i've had this piece for like over a year and uh i got a project coming up that i want to use it but i'm not sure if i can actually forge it or do anything with it so today it's going to be an experiment day we're just going to see what we can actually do with this stuff so in canal is considered a super alloy it's used a lot in aerospace industry it's typically used in situations where there's just extreme conditions. Inconel apparently really with, uh, attains its strength in elevated temperatures where other steels or materials fall apart. So that'll be interesting to see how it forges. And it's used a lot in, uh... oh, hang on, it's really dark here, hang on. So yeah, it's used in these extreme environments. I think it's got a lot of similar properties to sort of like a stainless steel. Like apparently you can't cut it with a torch and uh, it's non-magnetic and stuff like that. So anyways, really, like I mentioned, what I want to try today is just to see if I can forge it and then if we can actually kind of like handle the material. I'd like to try maybe, um, you know, can we cut it, forge it, grind it, sand it, drill it, uh, face it or mill it, maybe put some threads in it. And then if that all works, then I know how I can use this for future projects. So again, it's just an experiment today, but I'm super glad you're here. I'm pretty excited about this. I hope you are too. And uh, let's start with our first test here to see if we can cut this in the bandsaw. So we're over at the bandsaw here. We're gonna see, this is the, probably the best way to just completely destroy your bandsaw blade, but whatever, we're doing it. I'm gonna grab a smaller chunk, maybe about that big. Plugged in? I think we are. Okay, let's see if we can cut in canal here. I don't think it's working. It's gotten that far and then it just stopped. There's like no chips coming off at all right now. So far I got before the blade ran out. That's not good. So I don't really want to talk about it, but I may have dropped that piece of ink canal into the hole under the fly press. I can't get it out. <laughs> so yeah, you can lose ink and out. Ah, oh, how was it? It was right. Let's cut the camera. I don't want. To, I don't want anybody to see this. This is. Got it. Look at that. Ha ha. It's interesting. This is just off the belt sander and it seemed to work pretty good on the belt sander, better than I thought it would. But the weird thing is, is it throws zero sparks or almost zero sparks, which is very, very interesting. And that was the same for cutting it with the angle grinder too, no sparks. Let's throw this piece into the forge and see what happens. <laughs> Up the temperature here. Just gonna come out to the anvil. I'm just gonna do some hand work to see how it feels. Oh, that is so hard. What the heck? You see this, Martin? It's like, did it even leave a hammer mark in there? It's uh, property is maintaining strength in elevated temperatures. Okay, I'm gonna stick that back in the forge. <laughs> oh man. All right, got a little bit hotter. Let's see what we can do here. Oh, dude, what was that? I don't even know what to say. It just exploded. Look at this, chunks down there. Chunks back there, a couple chunks over there. 
Wow, I not in a million years would have I thought that was going to happen. I thought this stuff would forge easy peasy. Keep my safety glasses on here. I don't know what's going to happen. Martin, did you think that was going to happen? I actually didn't think forging was going to be an issue at all. It would be like an easy peasy forge job. Okay, I don't know if that was like luck of the drop, but we're going to try another one and see what's going on here because that, that is hard to believe. Guys, check out my titanium hammer. Look what happened to it. Is it the ink canal just sitting on there or is it actually a ding? Oh, maybe it's, maybe it's not actually. Maybe it's just sitting on there. And let me look at this closer. You know what? Actually, I don't think it's a ding. I think it's just, it's going to be okay. This is my second piece coming in here. I didn't get it as hot. Oh man, it doesn't even move, but whatever. We're just going to roll with it. That is so hard. I just want to see if it's going to break apart or not. That is so, it's like a cold piece of steel. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it on the power hammer. I'm just gonna put a little bit more heat on it. That is the hardest material I've ever forged in my life. That is crazy how hard that is. But it didn't break apart, just lower temperature. I think it, I think it holds together. So that was probably my problem. I just had overheated it. So I'm gonna heat it up one more time. Watch that heat really careful. Just see how far we can keep going with this. Pretty crazy, hey Martin? Man, does it look hard when I'm forging it? Yeah. yeah. This is like my third heat on it. And if you've ever worked um, cold steel under a power hammer, you get really sore in your joints super fast. It feels like I've been working cold steel because the shock is so crazy. And uh, I'm running the power hammer flat out on like a three quarter inch square bar. I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab a piece of mild steel. I'm gonna chuck it in the forge. I'm gonna show you what happens. Put the pedal to the floor. Like you just gotta see, I don't know if I, like if you don't know, you gotta see how tough this stuff is. I'm gonna show you, okay? So I'll heat this up one more time and I'll give it a full meal deal on the power hammer and then we'll do that to mild steel. So there you go. I didn't even get as deep into the throttle of the power hammer and then I did half as many blows. You can see, look at the difference, right? That's almost quarter of an inch. That's still five eighths. That is gnarly stuff. Okay, so we understand that now, Tim. I'm just gonna heat this up one more time. I'm gonna try to get it to a nice square bar. Okay, so I'm done foraging and uh, I'm gonna write this off as you can forage it. Super, super crazy hard. And because it's so hard, I would probably only be forging it to do rough breakdown. So, you know, if I had two inch bar, I need one inch bar, I'm gonna do that. I'm not gonna be trying to forge any kind of complicated shape out of that. Cause it is just brutal. Gonna let that cool off. 
and then we're gonna see what we can do on the machining side of things. We're over at the mill here. So in my preliminary reading for machining in canal, you're supposed to take a slower, thicker pass because multiple passes can get it work hardening and then you won't be able to get anywhere. I've decided to use this end mill because it has the replaceable inserts. Probably gonna burn those out, so that'll be about 50 bucks worth of inserts burned out. So maybe you would consider hitting that like button and possibly that subscribe button. All right, let's do it. machined really great so far. I'm gonna just turn it now to the side and that'll probably be the harder test. More surface area. I'll probably do a couple passes even just to see what happens. I honestly don't have any complaints on how that's machined so far. It's been really great. I'm gonna take a smaller, um, end mill and just put a little bit of a slot in there, see how that goes. And then we'll drill some holes and we'll see how that goes. I'm pretty optimistic though so far. Oh, so it did break but I'm not gonna write that off because the uh, end mill wasn't new and it was working pretty good. I was pushing it a little bit at the end there. So I, th I think we're okay. It's, it's not easy, but it's doable. So now I'm just gonna quickly drill a hole, see how that goes. And then we're gonna try to tap that, put some thread in it. And I think then we'll be done. We'll see how it goes. I have not been able to get a hole through this. And if you start to look at this, this is really interesting where the end mill broke. It looks like it's about the same depth of where the drill bits are just saying no, no more. And I'm wondering if that's what they're talking about where that work hardening starts to happen at that depth. I'd say I get about halfway through that chunk. So about a quarter of an inch in, and then it just says no, no more. But the, the milling went really, really nice. But I mean, again, I'm just skimming the top of that thing, right? Check this out. Martin just pulled the bandsaw blade out. Look at these spots here. The teeth are like completely mauled over. That thing does not cut at all. So how do we wrap this up? I guess, yes, you can forge in canal, though it's ridiculously hard. My goodness. And then, ah, uh, machine seems like it's a little bit tricky, but Manageable, eh? Definitely something to consider though in a project, how you wanna, how much you have to do for machining and whatnot. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. It's been a hoot as always. Complete gong show. That's all Canadian terminology for you, eh? <laughs> Make sure to check out, what the? Sorry. Martin guy. Make sure to check out the link down below if you're interested in a bottle opener. Should have that in my hand when I say that. Oh man, drop that thing solid. Links down below for the bottle opener. And if you're looking for any of these exotic materials, check out Sack and Metals. I'll also throw the link down below. And we will look forward to seeing you. Oh wait, please consider subscribing. Just smash that subscriber button. And uh, I think we'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, have a good one. Smooth as silk, as always. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man.